This is Steve from Drum Dial, and in this next video, I'll show you how to troubleshoot and fix some common drum tuning problems. When using Drum Dial for fine tuning, be sure to tune in small increments in a circular pattern. This will help when identifying bad bearing edges also. Bad bearing edges that are uneven can cause the strongest die cast hoops to warp over time. A bearing edge with a high spot makes drum tuning almost impossible. Notice that this drum is tuned to 85 at each lug, except here. It's at 87 and the tension rod is loose. This is because the bearing edge has a high spot. With hoops and heads in place, drum dial is the only tool that can identify a high spot in the bearing edge. Fine tune in small increments in a circular pattern. This will help to work around a bad bearing edge and a loose lug. With a bad bearing edge, the tuning won't be perfect or get any better until the bearing edge is repaired. This was our bad lug area that had the loose tension rod, and this is the high spot. The low spots will be to either side or both sides of the lug. In this case, it was to the left of the lug. I'll rotate the drum, and as you can see, there's a lot of light coming from this large gap. And this bearing edge is wobbly. I'm using a granite surface plate with black construction paper to make it easier to see any bad edges. This area is at least an eighth of an inch of a gap here. And when drum dial helps you to identify a problem with your edges, don't put off the repair for too long. You'll be surprised at how much better your drums will sound and how much more sustain and volume they'll have. This drum will have to be sent out for repair. I'll get it back in a week or two and I'll recheck the bearing edges then. If you don't have time to repair a bad hoop or bearing edge, here's a short term fix. At least change out your drum head. Be sure to mark your hoop and lug with alignment marks so you can match them back up to the same position they were originally. If you mismatch bad hoops to an already bad bearing edge, the tuning worsens, so be sure to match them back up. This won't solve the underlying problem, but will help in the short run to get you back up and playing. This drum has a different pitch at one of the lugs. The drum dial readings are all the same, but one of the pitches is lower. 401 hertz at all the lugs except one. It's lower sounding at 395 hertz and is definitely out of tune from the other tuning points. Watch the red needle or see the numbers on the lower left monitor behind the drum. I'm consistently getting 395 at that one lug and 401 hertz at all of the rest. When I test the head tension at each lug with the drum dial, I'm getting 85 but the pitches don't match. 401 hertz and 395 hertz. This is a sign of a warped hoop or a bad head. I'll rotate the drum so the low pitch will be on the lug on the right. You can easily hear the difference. This is caused by a warped hoop. The drum dial readings are all 85, but this lug pitch doesn't match because it probably has a bad hoop. Remember, same tension but a different pitch, probably a bad hoop or an old drum head is the cause. Test your hoops on a hard, flat surface, checking for wobble and high spots. This is a high spot here. Rotate the hoop and test again, just in case your hard, flat surface wasn't as flat as you thought it was. Be sure to place the hoop top side down, because the bottom may have small raised casting spots or tool marks that will give you a false wobble. Keep rotating and checking for wobble at different places. This will make it easier when you start straightening your hoops. The main thing we're looking for here is a warped hoop. This is an easy do-it-yourself repair. Using a hard flat surface and a 2x4 to hold the hoop firmly in place, slowly push down using very small tweaks. Slightly bend the hoop down at the high spot. Retest and keep working to find the high areas on the hoop. The board really helps here and keeps the hoop from shifting. Remember to lightly push down using very small tweaks and then rotate and test the hoop again. Small adjustments are always best when bending and straightening the hoop. Be sure to place the hoop top side down because the bottom may have small raised casting marks that will wobble. Retest and keep working until the hoop is no longer warped and is nice and flat.
Looks like this hoop is straightened, no wobble, nice and flat. Another very common problem is tap tuning without dampening the bottom drum head. Even worse, tap tuning over a bottom head that's out of tune. This would give you a false impression that your top drum head is out of tune when actually it's the bottom head that's out. You can tune in circles trying to chase a note this way. Always dampen the bottom head before tap tuning the opposite head. Trust your drum dial. It'll give you an accurate reading. This was our high spot on the bearing edge where we had the loose tension rod. In this area was where we had the large gap. I'll test the bearing edge gap with a folded sheet of paper to check for any high spots. The repair shop did a beautiful job recutting this bearing edge. I'm ready to reassemble and test this drum out. This drum started out with some serious problems, all caused by a bad bearing edge. I suspect the hoop warped over time, taking the shape of the bearing edge because the hoop wasn't realigned between head changes. This didn't help the old drum heads and probably caused the poor head seating issues that led to the uneven pitches. This drum was tuned to 85 with a drum dial. It's tuned to within a tenth of a hertz. At this tuning range, that's less than a one cent difference between the lugs. Drum dial has been used by drum techs and repair shops for a long time and all of the tuning issues that I mentioned could have been avoided by testing the edges early on. Fortunately for most of us, these bearing edge issues are not very common. Trust your drum dial, the readings are very accurate. Listen and watch for the pitch when I lift the drum dial. I hope you like this series. Our upcoming videos will cover bass and snare tuning, plus I'll be testing multiple head combinations for different tom sounds.